Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to show you how to install Ansible and how to configure it at the run some of the command. Okay, my name is Shankar and I am from the Luxe Technologies and if you need more information, please visit our website www.galaxy.net. So with that, let's jump into our next. So here, this is the procedure I am going to follow. First, I am going to launch it. Uh, two EC2 instances, one is the control server, another one is host, host mapping that which is managed by the Ansible control server. And it is always best practice that once you have launched any EC2 instance, please update your system by running this one. Once it is updated, you can try to install Ansible, but by default, Ansible is not coming to the default package. For that, you need to add your file for the default to main EPA. UPL stands for extra, pack, sorry, extra packages for the enterprise level. So by using this one, you can able to, uh, uh, what I can say, add part of the uh, repository to your system. Then you can try for try to install Ansible, which should work. Once Ansible configuration is done, you can test it out by running the what is the version of your Ansible, uh, currently installed Ansible version. Right? Once the installation is done, you need to configure your system appropriately. So your Ansible control server is going to manage Ansible host. Further, you should have a common user across your environment. In our case, we are going to create two systems. Both systems are going to have a same user called AMS admin we are going to create. And uh, for clear understanding, I have mentioned master and slave, nothing but where you need to execute all these steps, right? So once you have created a user for Ansible uh, administration, and you should grant administrative access, okay? And uh, once uh, administrative access you have granted, you need to enable the user login. By default, what happens in EC2 instances, user login is visible, the only prepared login will be allowed. That's why we are going to login with EC2 minus user by using the key base. But if you want to login as a, uh, what I can say, User, you should enable user login by modifying here the password authentication to X in this file, and uh, you can enable the login. And, and we need to restart the SSH service. Next one would be the we are going to enable passwordless authentication in between your Ansible control server to Ansible host. So for that, you need to create or generate a, 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 a key from your ANS admin. Okay, it should be from the user where you are you are going from which user you are going to manage your client systems okay so here ans admin you need to log in as the ans admin and then you need to generate the key once the key has been generated you need to copy into the target systems okay in our case we have only one target system we are going to copy over there if you have more uh, target systems you need to do the same thing for all your systems and uh, Next thing would be the updating the host file. By default, the default host file will be there in the slash etc Ansible and host. This is the default host file. And uh, the systems which you are going to manage, you need to update in this uh, file. So whatever systems uh, you manage. And once it is done, you can able to run the, uh, some of the other commands. And uh, uh, this is the opt-in command which we are going to try. Here, yum stands for module. Once if you run this command, if you, the system is reachable, you should be able to get a successful response. Once it is done, we are going to run some uh, simple uh, Ansible commands to try to reboot our client system, I mean to say uh, Ansible host system, copying file from the Ansible control server to uh, client system, creating user and removing the user, changing the permission, installing packages, starting the service, stopping the service. You can do all these activities from the Ansible control server. You need not to log into your client system. In our case, we may be managing only one system, but in a uh, real world, you may be managing the hundred or thousand systems with the Ansible control server, right? But whatever you want to manage, you need to update in the host file. Otherwise, it cannot happen. With that, let's jump into our AWS console and launch two instances for Ansible master server and host. I'm in my AWS console. Here we are, I'm going to launch two instances. So this would be the Amazon Red Hat Linux, sorry, Red Hat Linux. It is T2 Metro. 
we need two instances having directly given over here. Let it be in the default and we need a password. Uh, IP address, public IP. So I'm going to name it as a Ansible servers. I will modify it again and uh, we are going to demo security group. We just need the SSL only. We don't require AT. Let it be because I'm going to test our security. And uh, Amazon, oh, sorry, Ansible is a agentless. That's why you need not to open any additional port. It is going to run on port number 22 itself. That is one of the advantages. That's why people are using more Ansible systems. And I'm creating a new key pair called Ansible 2. Let me download it. Okay, with that, I'm launching my system. So I think uh, our two systems are getting ready. So what I will do, I will name that a one server as an Ansible control server. Ansible post or client one, whatever you want. So I have renamed it. Let's log into the server. I'm using mobile system to log into our servers and let's take the IP address of our system and jump in. Unloading PPU. If you use mobile system, you will not have to convert your uh, PK10 to PPK. EC2 minus user. Once you have logged in, you need to update your system. That is always a best practice to update it. You should become group yum update. So let it run. Meantime, I'm just going to rename my session name as well. Ansible control server. So it is very easy for us to identify. Yes, I want to proceed with the update. And meantime, I will uh, log into the our client system as well. So here I have logged into my client system as well and uh, let's update here. Right. Now our systems got updated. I have done on the Ansible control server as well as client system. Both are updated. And I'm going to follow the steps what I have shown you. So we have completed step two. And we'll try to export or install Ansible, but it is not going to, it is going to tell you that Ansible pack, packages are not known. And again, we are going to add the task to the budget. We think it should work. Let's do. As a testing, I'm trying to run the yum install Ansible. And uh, if you see here, it is going to tell that uh, there is nothing. So let's add the task to repository. So this is the command you need to use, rpm minus uh, uvh and followed by the uh, link. I am going to give this link in the description of this video. It is going to add the content that is basically my young install instead of the sorry, Ansible. And to install Ansible, we should need the uh, Python because uh, it, it, it is a prerequisite, so that's why it is going to install the Python related package. It's also going to install in Ansible. Anyway, Python is already installed by default in the other systems manually. Okay, now installation is completed. Let me run the Ansible minus minus version. This is the command to check it out. Currently, we have installed ansible 2.4.2.0, and this is the configuration file, and uh, this is the some of the modules location, right? And the next step, we are going to configure our Ansible system. So to configure, we are going to follow these steps. These are the steps we are going to follow. So for configuration, we need to work on the master and as well as client systems as well. So you need to create a common user in the all the environment, uh, entire environment. 
and give the uh, what I think the pseudo access, then enable the user because in EC2 instances, by default, the user is not enabled. You can generate the key page, copy the key page, and add your client systems to the host file or test it out. Right? So for that, I first I'm going to create a user called user add AMS admin. This is the administrator user for Ansible configuration management. So password for Ansible. I'm giving some complex password. Right, I have given the password and same thing you need to do in your client system also. Let me find out, let me restart it. So the user add AMS admin and set the password for it. AMS admin. Okay, I have given the password. Now, if you have multiple uh, client systems for uh, which are managed by your Ansible control server, then you need to do execute this step in the all your client systems also. Next thing is we should provide the sudo access. So VA sudo. I'm doing uh, side by side mass translate. So our username is AMS admin. How is it called? It should be no password, otherwise again it is a problem whenever the commands are executing on your client system and save it. Same thing you need to do in your client system also. So VA sudo. AMS admin. Doing the same thing. Right? Now I have done the given the sudo. Next thing is we should enable the user authentication for that. I'm doing in the master server. So cd scan etc ssh. Under this we have a file called ssh underscore config. So we use ssh underscore config. In this we have a password authentication. It will do no. We should make it as a yes. Okay. Nothing that allow the you uh, users by using the password. So it should be under SSHD underscore. Changes which I have done in the previous one. Next thing is you need to restart the service. Service SSH to restart. Okay, otherwise it won't get take away. Don't stop because if you stop SSH, you cannot you will be come out from the system and you cannot be able to log it. You may need to restart your system. So I'm doing the same thing on the, our client system also. So we will test SSH, SSH, for config, and password, authentication, yes, and no And the service, SSH, restart. 
If you don't do this one, you cannot be able to log in as a user. Now I think I have done the uh, required steps for user and let's see what could be the next step. So we have done the first step and second step and third step is generating the SSH key name. But to generate this one, you should log in as a AMS admin. Let's jump in and log in as the AMS admin. I'm starting to click session. This time I'm logging in as a AMS admin. Because it is loaded with people. That's why it is allowing whether you want me to access or not. Yeah. Now I have logged in as a AMS admin. Now we need to generate the uh, key, I mean to say uh, public and private keys for the you should run SSH key jump. It is going to generate a key key and store it under your home directory called .ssh. In this location it is going to store series dot ssh. This is here there is a public key and a private key. Next thing is you need to copy your key into your client system. In our case, our client system is Ansible uh, host one. So we need to find out the IP address of this one. Don't use the public IPs, use the private IP. This is the IP address. So to copy your keys on your client system from the master, you should run SSH copy minus ID and your IP address. This is the IP address and you are doing as the Ansible admin. Now it will go and sit in the Ansible admin user and first time we need to provide password and this password must be same across the environment. Now you can see here one key has been added into your client system. And now I will try to log into this server and it should not ask for the password. You can see here I have jumped from 3120 to 19 29.230. Nothing but without password, I can able to log into this system. Then only your playbooks will work appropriately. So if you have multiple uh, more of uh, client systems, you need to do these steps uh, all on all your client systems. Nothing but creating a common user, adding that into the sudo, sudo and enable the user login. Next one would be the copy in the admin uh, ans admin or whatever user you are using that user uh, key you need to copy into the uh, destination system right now let me execute uh, one of the playbook so from here and uh, to run that one you need to use the command called ansible ansible Sorry, yeah, next step is we need to add our client systems to our post file. So VA is sudo VA plus etc ansible post. Okay, this is the default file. Here you need to write it. So by default, it will have some entries you can see here. That is a description how you, need, you can do the entries. You can read, but uh, I'm removing entire data. And we are creating new one. Under this, we have groups. Okay. If you want to know more about it, you can attend our detailed session on the Ansible. All hosts I'm giving over here. Next thing is our client systems, which are managed by your Ansible master. All these uh, client systems should be updated in the host file. And you can create your own host file if you need. Okay. Service. Now let me execute the uh, one of the playbook which we commonly use. Nothing but I just want to check whether I can able to reach my client system or not. I want to check whether client system is up or down. So it's it's a very simple. A Ansible all all nothing but whatever systems are there in the host file. It is going to try to execute this command on all the hosts which are there in the uh, host file all minus m ping so here minus m stands for module p nothing but ping nothing but it is going to ping that system 
and if it is able to try to reach to your system successfully, it is going to be a response all the time. Nothing but now the communication in between your Ansible control server to your host system has been established. This is how you can add your client systems to your Ansible master and uh, Ansible control server. And these steps you need you can do in our all systems and you can start now. Now I am going to run some of the adapt commands which I have shown you. Let's uh, show you again. So here if I want to reboot my client system, I can able to run this command, but I don't want to. So now what I will do, I will create a one file and that file I will be copying into a destination system. So for that, you need to use a module called copy. Okay, next attributes will be the source and the destination. What is the source file and destination file? Let's jump in. So I'm creating a temporary file under my home directory, I will go out and yes, yes, to the PD. So cat return hello dot html yes. I'm creating hello. Now what I will do, I want to copy this file onto destination system. Before copying it, I will just show you in the destination system. Even here also, it is going to copy onto the Ansible uh, admin user account. I'm clearing the screen. So let me switch into the slash home slash Ansible admin home account. And you can see here, currently you are under Ansible admin home account and nothing is there. Once I have executed Ansible command, I could be able to see the file in the destination location. So let's see AMS Ansible all, all nothing but whatever systems are there in your host file. You can specify the IP address of your system if you want to copy into a single um, host system. But here we have only one and we get that in the host file. And we are going to use the copy module next attributes we are going to give source so source file is located in the slash home slash ams admin slash hello dot okay this is the source file and the destination would be our home slash admin okay into this location and copy so let's do that one and you can see here it has been copied onto the 172.31.29.239 and it is success and changed to nothing but it is successfully copied and uh, this is the location it has been copied. Now let's go back and check here now. You can see here hello.html and if you see the timestamp, it's just copied. Next one would be if I run the same command again, now the file is already existed on the destination location this time it will not copy but the command would be success why because the change is equal to fail, false nothing but it's already exist in the destination location right next one would be i'm going to install the httpd package on the client system for that ansible all minus m module called we are going to use m and minus a we are going to use main httpd i want to install and uh, state latest nothing but install the latest package of httpd on our all client systems right let me execute it and we'll see what happens you can see here it is failed why because as i told you in the client system you should have the administrator access to do all this stuff m you cannot run as a normal user that's why we are going to use the okay yes stands for sudo and we will try to execute it but it is a little more the command but still it is going to execute on your client system now you can see here it has been success as a true nothing but it has been installed 
if you are sure I haven't installed HTTPD yet, but let me see that service HTTPD status, nothing but if it is installed. You can see that Apache HTTPD is already installed and in active state. Okay, now what I will do, I'm going to start the HTTPD service by using the answer command. And it says all, let me check that. Minus M service minus U name name of the service which will be stay start. Okay, this is the command you should execute. If you execute, the service will get started in our client system and it has been successful. I think. Let's see, and you can see here it has been active. I have started it from here. That's how you can execute your Ansible Adapt command. There are a lot. You need to practice it, and it is going to help you to start uh, working with Ansible. And it is coming very good, guys. And uh, if you have any doubts on this one, please comment in this uh, video. We are going to help you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for uh, till then.